that it's been a long afternoon, but I'll make it really cut short. I've been told only 15 minutes, and um, believe me, I won't stretch beyond 17 minutes. <laughs> it's been really a privilege to be over here. In fact, um, a presenter just before the, just after the lunch uh, from Norton, he actually gave a presentation from the technical perspective and statistics. Actually, I come from the investigation field. My clients are only the police. And when I just went out, I was very happy to know that there was a call from the Home Ministry in Delhi saying that we want some certain services. So I thought that key cybercrime is moving. And if the call comes from the government sector, then it's something really, really a good news. The topic what I'm going to touch across upon is not on the technical perspective, but actually speaking on the live things, and actually talking about that why cyber education is very important from the school scenario. To start up with, I would just like to put across, after working on almost 2,000 cases of cybercrime, you, you may feel this unbelievable, but actually it is. From Maharashtra and Goa, the two states where I come from, four to five cases every day. So you can just go on across with last seven to eight years, what I've worked across, almost 2,000 cases of cybercrime. 70% of these cybercrimes, actually, the age group is somewhere between 15 to 25. And I believe some part of it are the school children also. To share it across with you, a very famous school in Mumbai received an SMS that a bomb is going to get blast in the school on so and so date. And the SMS coming from a student studying in the same school. When the principal came to know about it, the investigations went on. Finally, it was found that the SMS which was been sent was sent from a genuine number, but actually not sent by that person. Spoofed SMS. I'm sure that many of you may be aware and I have got learned citizen at this moment, that it's quite possible that without touching your SIM card, your SIM card may be in your pocket, but still a SMS could be generated from your SIM card to any person in this universe. Number one. Number two, Sholapur, one more district in Maharashtra, it's the place where the present Home Minister of India comes from that place. Four years before, I was working on a case when an email was sent to the Commissioner of Police in Sholapur that on the Muharram day, there is going to be so-and-so adverse effect on the city of Sholapur. Believe me, 32 police officers were working on that case at night, 10 o'clock, when I got the call. In the next 19 hours, the person was caught who had sent the mail, a 17-year-old boy studying in 11th standard in a college, sent a threatening mail to the Commissioner of Police of Sholapur, just from two kilometers away from the CP's office, identifying himself that he is a, he is a member of Al-Qaeda. What I mean to say across is that the crimes which have been originated or perpetrated are actually done by children in the teenagers. Adnan Patrawala. 15-year-old boy studying in a school in Mumbai had a very, very sad story to his life when he was brutally murdered. His big mistake, he was there on Orkut chatting with an unknown friend whom he thought was a girl with whom he was chatting across when one fine day he received a scrap, an intimation that she would like to meet him. Adnan went to a place in Borivli to meet that girl, actually found later on that it was the kidnappers of Adnan and not the girl to whom he was chatting across. Four or five days later, Adnan's body was found in one of the outskirts of Mumbai, cut into three pieces. Cybercrime. The recent case of Balasai Thakre, in which a girl had put some certain contents, which I believe became a na national furor. Section 66 of a a of the Information Technology Act has to be amended. So many ways, every place where I go across to the law institutes, I hear about this section. 
Section 66A has to be amended whatsoever. The debate is not on that. The debate is that the contents which were put by that girl were actually were hurting the sentiments of the people was, or was it a freedom of speech? Post the content which was put of Bala Sahib Thakre, just 8 to 10 days before, there was some certain obscene contents put on Facebook of Mr. Raj Thakre. And believe me, I was there in the police station from morning 11 o'clock to night 12 o'clock, tracking it out that who was the person who put it. But let me tell you, we are still investigating it because the server of Facebook is in US. By the time we get the information, it may take about 45 days. And India being one of the largest perpetrator of technology at this moment, can we wait for that 45 days to information to come from Facebook is a big question mark. What I mean to put across to you is that when I was investigating that case, or when I was working on the analysis of that matter, what I found across was that whoever has made it will be known. Had just taken a photograph of a guy known as Sunil Vishwakarma. He happened to be coming from Uttar Pradesh. Happened to be coming from. His photograph was taken and a message was been sent to a guy who was from MNS party. Something wrong about Mr. Raj Thakre. When he got this message on his Facebook, when he opened it out, he saw the photograph and the most hilarious thing was that with Sunil Vishwakarma's name on Google it was searched and believe me the same photograph came which the message was sent to this guy from Manse party, the same photograph. The police thought that this is the same guy who has sent that message and caught him. 24 hours he was detained in the police station. At the end of the day, it was found that he was not the person who had sent the message. The reason why I am telling you all this is because today children know technology more than us. All said and done. And I think we have to accept it with humbleness. You give them a mobile phone at the age of 11, 12, they know all the op options, they know all the operations, which I believe at a later age, we don't know the complete part which they know about it. Many of the things I learn from the youngsters, how these options have to be used, so on and so forth. The most controversial case which happened in Maharashtra just about five to six months before, the paper leak matter in the University of Mumbai. May 26, there was some paper which was leaked of Mumbai University. Why I'm telling you is this, because technology was used to catch the perpetrator of the crime. 16 people were arrested in 12 days, thanks to technology. How the paper got leaked? The paper got leaked due to some of the casual attitude of one of the professor who was setting the paper. When she was told by the university to set the paper, she said that I don't have time. She gave to her colleague, you set the paper. She did not go to the examination center in the university premises, but she set the paper in the college premises. And after setting the paper, she told her pune, kindly make three copies of it. But the pune was very intelligent. He made four copies of it. Three copies, he gave it to the person who had set the paper. And the fourth copy he kept with him just to make money out of it, that he sold that paper to a coaching class. And few days down the line, the same paper came across in the examination. How he was, how he was caught, that's something very interesting, thanks to technology. And thanks to Facebook, at least in one perspective, how the perpetrators were caught. When this question paper was circulated to the coaching class, where it was given up over there, they made money out of it. 180 students were there in the coaching class. The paper was circulated to them. After circulating the paper, the students in turn made money out of it by circulating to somebody else, to some others. And the money was made over there also. Finally, the question paper landed to a guy at night about 12, 12.30. He said that now I don't want money, but I want to be famous. And he took that question paper and put it on Facebook. That was his biggest mistake. 
and when he uploaded that question paper on Facebook at night 2 a.m., he was not knowing that within the next 10 days, the police may be knocking at his door to catch him. If he would not have uploaded that question paper on the Facebook, probably it would have been difficult to catch him. But when he uploaded the question paper on the Facebook, his digital footprints were captured by the server, and in a matter of time, in a few days down the line, he was being caught. And with him, another 15 people were arrested, so on and so forth. Having the matter to be resolved at that moment is not the solution. The biggest challenge then was how to ensure that the paper don't get leaked. And believe me, on May 26th, I was there in the University of Mumbai talking to the Vice Chancellor and his main concern was that we have caught the people, but how to ensure that we make a so-called foolproof system in the University of Mumbai. Once again, thanks to technology. In three to four days down the line, there was a system which was being developed wherein the question papers were being sent to each of the colleges in, under Mumbai University through a digital encrypted form, digitally signed, so on and so forth. In the first phase, 65 engineering colleges were being sent the question papers through a digital encrypted mode just one hour before the examination, just one hour before. And each of these 65 engineering colleges where the examinations were conducted, first for the engineering colleges, where the examinations were conducted, the password to download those question paper was sent to their mobile via SMS just one hour before. Yeah, it was a little Herculean task for the institutions, and that is to download the question paper, take printouts, and distribute among the students. But I believe you come from more from the academic field. I come little less. I come from more from the technological and investigation point of view. But I believe that every student, at least at the university level, they have to come to the examination center half an hour before the exam starts. So if the exam is scheduled at 11 a.m. in the morning, by 10.30, they have to be there in the respective examination center. And here the question papers were being sent at 10 a.m. in the morning. By the time the printouts were taken, by the time were distributed, it was almost 10.50 to 11. So there was hardly any way of a question paper getting to be leaked. Technology at its full extent. 65 engineering colleges went full-fledged in June 2012. In October 2012, 210 colleges of Mumbai University went online with this system. Come April, 470 colleges coming under Mumbai University will go online with the digitized delivery of papers, question paper. And come October 2013, all 710 colleges coming under Mumbai University will have only this particular system to be worked out where the question papers will be electronically encrypted digitized and sent to the examination centers and one hour before they have to download the paper, multiple printouts, give it to the students, so on and so forth. That was the solution which was being got and the system was put into place. What I mean to say across to you is that cybersecurity in the domain of education, I don't want to go into the statistics because the previous speaker has already spoken about it. So I don't want to get into those nitty gritties. But what I would say across is that in the state of Maharashtra, in the state of Goa, there have been institutions where schools at cybersecurity education has become mandatory. In fact, the large chunk of the Facebook users are basically school-going students and college-going students. And 70% of the cyber crimes taking place all over India is perpetrated through social networking crimes. And I think if this particular group has been properly leveraged, if there is an awareness program, if there is something as a mandatory program in the field of cyber education where technology should be used in a most secured manner, giving them the element of law, that the arms of the law are very long and they could be caught across, I am sure that this type of uh, education will actually help not only the students but as a country as a whole. In fact, I don't have any hesitation in saying that a karodpati can become roadpati 
instantly in few minutes. And I believe you might have read the newspaper if at all some information from Maharashtra comes to this part of our country. Just about five to six days before, a businessman in Mulund, a suburb of Mumbai, lost one crore rupees from his account. 54 lakh rupees was recovered within a span of 48 hours due to the merchant bank transfer, so on and so forth. But the remaining 46 lakhs rupees is still the mystery is going on. So today with all, all of the techniques working on e, e-business, everything is on e-business, e-technology, I think the time has come across that cybersecurity education has to start at the school level. There has to be a lot of particular motivation to the students telling them that use technology that is for your betterment, but at the same time understand the implications of it. If the education has been put at this level, at a level where they are young enough, I am sure that India who has a shortage of 5 lakh cyber security professionals by the year 2015, this bridge could be curtailed across and we will have a lot of cyber security professionals to ensure that India's lot of particular intellectual data will not go haywire or will not go into some unforeseen hands, so on and so forth. If I have to believe the media, by 2017, it is estimated that China will account to almost 95% of the world's data with them. And this will be the critical information with them by which they will become a superpower in the days to come. My 15 minutes are over, I believe. And I told you that I won't stretch beyond 17 minutes. Because what I just wanted to discuss with you in a very short and a sweet topic, and coming right to the point that cyber education is important, because all those cases, majority what I shared with you is actually done by youngsters. And I think most of you as principals or teachers teaching the students, I think it's your responsibility, equal responsibility of us also to ensure that the children who study up get this education not to become criminals but actually to become as detectors, actually to become as prevent themselves, so on and so forth. Well, last one minute and then if at all you have a question, I want to keep this as an open forum to you. Parental control is a must. That's a very, very important thing across what the child is doing. In fact, in one of the institutes, in one of the school in Nasik, I was talking to the principal and to the managing trustee. And while talking with her, I found out that ki the institution's resources were actually not being used to the right extent. I just advised her that why don't you put a parental control in your system just to find out what is happening in your system. And when there was a parental control put into the system, 90% of the time the student access social networking website, chatting with unknown peoples, putting up some information which is personal in nature, which actually in turn is used by the criminals to commit an offense, so on and so forth. So I believe that this forum, through this forum, I am sure that you would like to take it across that this education should be put it out to the students as a mass so on and so forth. I am through it. If you have any questions, you can ask from me. Any specific questions you have got. But please ask me from the live investigation point of view. Don't ask me any theory. If you yeah. If you have, any, have anything on the live investigation, then how a banking fraud can be investigated, you can ask me that and I could tell you across. Don't ask me how it is being done. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know, I have been bound by the law that I can actually speak on the detection, prevention and investigation. So don't ask me how it has been done and or I will tell you that. I am patriotic to that extent. But if you want to ask me how it could be detected, yes, I would tell you. Or any matter for that case, you know, where you feel that cybercrime is a big glitch, so on and so forth. I think everybody is getting scared to ask you. <laughs> Okay, I think thanks a lot for this forum. I thank Deepak for giving this opportunity me to to me. Although I came from uh, uh, Goa to Mumbai and Mumbai to Delhi, but looking at the crowd, you know, I got really inspired 
and uh, I hope that you know that uh, this momentum will go forward and I hope Deepak whatever activity he carries across with all the schools in and around in Delhi and CR will actually benefit by the use of ICT in their daily matters. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.